Hola. Okay, so we're back. So let's look about the structure of a sentence. Now we know that a, a sentence is a group of words that conveys a complete thought. Not just a whole bunch of words that don't make any sense. A sentence is a group of words that convey a complete thought. So let's look at the subject and the predicate. Let's look at the structure of the sentence. The subject is the most important thing in a sentence. The subject tells who or what the sentence is about. Okay, so let me say it again. The subject is the most important item, most important thing in the sentence. It tells who or what the sentence is about. So to give you an idea, a better idea, the movie Mission Impossible. Okay, Mission Impossible. Thousands of people in the movie. Thousands. But who was the number one subject of the movie? Tom Cruise was the subject of the movie. So all the people revolved around the subject, which was Tom Cruise. Okay, so the subject is the most important thing in a sentence. 99% of the sentences have a subject, verb, and predicate. 99. So you should be questioning in your mind, what's the 1%? The 1% is what we call an imperative, imperative sentence where there's no subject. It is inferred, it's understood what the subject is. So, Jose comes home and his wife says, Jose, sit down. So the subject of that sentence is Jose. Okay, and the verb is sit. Jose, sit down. Let's say he comes home and maybe she's mad. And as soon as he comes in, she says, sit down. Sit is the verb. Down is the adverb. Where's the subject? It's understood that Jose is the subject. But she doesn't say, Jose, sit down. So 1% of the time, you have an imperative sentence where there is no subject. Now, the predicate comes after the subject. The predicate tells what the subject does or is. The predicate tells what the subject does or is. So I have an example here for you. Mary went to the campus. Mary went to the campus. Who are we talking about? What's the subject of this sentence? Mary is the subject. Mary is a noun. The subject could only be a noun or a pronoun. The subject could only be a noun or a pronoun. The subject is not a verb, an adverb, an adjective, conjunction, preposition. Never, never. The subject is going to be a noun or a pronoun. So Mary went to the campus. Mary did what? She went, so went is the verb. 
It's an action verb. How do we know it's an action verb? Because we ask the question, what did Mary do? She went. Okay? So, two is going to be a preposition. The is an adjective. Campus is a noun. The prepositional phrase to the campus. Now, the predicate is going to be the verb and everything that comes after the verb till the end of the sentence. So Mary is the subject. The predicate went to the campus. This is a simple sentence. In a compound sentence, you have two subjects, two verbs, and two predicates. Okay, and in also in complex sentences, it's the same thing. You have a subject and verb and predicate in one clause. You have a subject, verb, and predicate in the other clause. One clause is a dependent clause. The other one is an independent clause. Or it could be an independent clause, dependent clause. Okay. So, uh, let's look at an old method which is a powerful method. It's called diagramming sentences. Diagramming sentences. Before I show you, I give you a, a, a brief example of what diagram, diagramming a sentence is. Let me just share this with you. Uh, in the 40s, 1940s, there was an individual that was cre uh, considered uh, a great orator. An orator is a person that speaks well. He was a statesman. And he was the Prime Minister of Britain during the war, Winston Churchill. I'll give you a little background on Winston Churchill. His mother was a prostitute. His father was a hoi polloi, a man in the street. So he and his brother were removed from the family and put in an orphanage. Uh, and his mother being a prostitute and his father being a man of the street, they didn't put emphasis on education. So when he was in school, uh, he had a professor that taught him how to diagram a sentence, which is what I'm going to show you now. Um, Winston Churchill, during this, the Second World War, used to go on the radio every night. And his speeches were very motivating. Uh, again, he was an incredible, incredible orator. And he said that if young boys did not learn how to diagram sentences, they should be whipped. The reason why he became such an incredible orator was because he learned how to diagram sentences. So diagram sentences is telling you the different parts of speech and how they function uh, in a sentence. Every word has a purpose. Every word is a part of speech. So here's a sentence. The monkeys eat ripe bananas in the jungle. Write the sentence down. The monkeys eat ripe bananas in the jungle. So this method starts with putting a horizontal line under the subject and under the verb. And to indicate that a word is a verb, you put a line after the subject, and the line extends underneath the horizontal line. Then you look for the object of the sentence. The monkeys eat what? 
what do the monkeys eat? They eat bananas. So you underline bananas and you draw a line, but the line does not go underneath the horizontal line. It goes, it meets the horizontal line. So the first word is the, it's an article. So then you take a line under monkeys and you put the line down in a little angle and you put the article the. And you could indicate under it article and an article is an adjective. Okay. So you could go to the verb now, which is eat, right? Where do they eat? Where do they eat? In the jungle, prepositional phrase. So under eat, you put another line down and you put in the jungle and you could put underneath preposition. Now you have the noun bananas. What kind of bananas do they eat? Ripe bananas. It's an adjective. So you put a line down underneath bananas and you can put ripe and it's an adjective. So that gives you an idea of how to diagram a sentence. It's a rough, simplistic method uh, that I'm showing you here. So when I ask you to diagram a sentence, you don't have to do this, but you write a sentence and under each word you underline the subject, the verb, the pronoun, the adjective, adverb, preposition, conjunction, and if, and if there's an interjection, you, you also indicate, okay? Or you could write the sentence horizontally, and then vertically, you could write the sentence down again, which will be easy for me to read, and then you designate what part of speech is every word. So that'll help me because sometimes uh, when someone types in something, it jumps to the next word, and then I, I'm confused. Okay, so let's look at it again. The subject and predicate. The subject is a noun or a pronoun, nothing else. It tells who or what the sentence is about. The predicate tells what the subject does or is, what the subject does or is is. An example, Mary went to the campus. What's the subject? Who are we talking about? Mary. Proper noun is the name. Okay. What did she do? She went. Mary did what? Went. So that tells you that went is a verb, and went is always going to be a verb. So what is the predicate? The verb and everything that follows. Mary is the subject now. Went to the campus is going to be the predicate of this sentence. The subject will be a noun or a pronoun. That's extremely important, makes it easier for you, okay? And I showed you how to diagram sentences, okay? The method of diagramming a sentence, which goes back a ways. A long time ago, they started this method. Now, uh, with Winston Churchill, they diagram they were taught to diagram by using different colors. So the subject could be red, whatever color they designated. The verb could be green. The adjective could be uh, yellow. 
So every part of speech had a different color. And I have had students in the past send me sentences and they color coded each word. Okay. Some students are highly visual. So if you're highly visual, okay, you may want to use different colors to indicate different parts of speech will make, make it easier for you to understand uh, the method of diagramming sentences. Okay, give me a second before I could switch boards. Okay, so quickly, and we'll go through it, we have seven different types of pronouns. We have the subjective personal pronoun, or just, you could say, personal pronoun. But if we say subjective, there's a reason. It means that these pronouns are going to be the subject of the sentence. We have the objective personal pronoun. We have possessive personal pronouns. We have reflective pronouns. We have interrogative pronouns. We have demonstrative pronouns, and we have indefinite pronouns. So we have seven different types of pronouns. Now, the major reason for the pronoun is to substitute for a noun. So you don't want to write a sentence and say, Maria is learning English in school. Maria lives in Gwinnett County. Maria has six children. Maria been married four times. Maria is from Venezuela. Maria drives a Mercedes. Maria has money in the bank. Maria loves to travel. The reader will say, hold it, hold it. You're driving me crazy with Maria. I don't want to read about Maria anymore. So if you substitute and you say, uh, Mar Maria is studying English. She has six children. So here you're substituting she for Maria, okay? She lives in Gwinnett County. Maria has six children. She has money in the bank. Her husband's name is Mario. Okay, so here you're substituting she and her pronouns for Maria. So you don't want to be redundant, okay? So one of the reasons we have pronouns is to substitute uh, for nouns. So we're going to go over each type of pronoun. Subjective pro personal pronoun, objective personal pronoun, 
possessive personal pronoun, reflective pronouns, interrogative pronouns, a demonstrative pronouns, indefinite pronouns. Ciao. See you soon.